Hello, Bernalillo First Assembly. We're so glad that you and your family have decided to join us on this video. And we hope and pray that today's video and message is gonna bless you and your family. But before we jump into the message, we wanna take a moment of worship. All right, good morning, church. Glad you guys could join us. Um, so glad that you guys are here this morning. Hey, this morning we're celebrating Easter. We're celebrating the, the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And I know right now to kind of set up stage before we head into worship that things might be crazy right now. Things are kind of chaotic. We don't have, some of us don't have, um, see the light at the end of the tunnel. And some of us may be in situations where we, we necessarily don't have hope. And so before we go into this, this song, I just want to encourage you that to let these words kind of sing over you and to, to let these lyrics, um, reflect what our heart says, that we have hope in our Savior, we have hope in Jesus, and that when he was resurrected, uh, resurrected, that he claimed victory over sin, he claimed victory over death, and because of that, he gives us that same victory through his resurrection, and so uh, I invite you to sing this song with us, um, stand up on your feet, do whatever, um, come on, let's sing this song with us. Jesus Christ. 
just thank you for giving us another day, God. Another day, God, with air in our lungs, and I just pray that we just thank you for getting out of, letting us getting out of a place where we can't get ourselves, God. That you let your son be the ultimate sacrifice. That on the third day, God, that he rose and won all the victories, God. And God, let us just be reminded by your Holy Spirit. God, we just give you all the power and the glory and the honor, and all of us said, amen. Man, what an incredible time of worship. I'm so thankful that we are able to still gather and worship together. I wanna to give a huge shout out to our amazing team right now. Go ahead and put your hands together for our amazing worship team. We love them very much and we're so happy to have worship during this time. Uh, but hey, we wanna welcome each and every one of you. Uh, I don't know what you're doing right now. Maybe you're gathering on a watch party on Facebook or maybe you invited a few people over to the house for Easter Sunday. But we wanna, on behalf 
behalf of Bernalillo First Assembly, want to invite and welcome each and every one of you. Um, and I just want to let you know, I know Easter Sunday looks a little bit different this year, obviously, but I want to let you know that it's exactly the same. The Bible says that where two or three people are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst. So I know last year y'all came dressed up in your spring colors, but we're still having church because church has never been about these four walls. It's always been about the people in the name that we praise. And so I want to let you know that we're still going to have an amazing Easter Sunday service. And with that being said, we have Pastor Christian Becker giving today's message. So right now on your couch in the watch party, go ahead and put those clapping emojis together and give a hand for Pastor Christian Becker. I'm so glad you are tuning in with us and watching us through the internet, through social media, our website, and different streets here on the internet. You probably never imagined that you were going to have Easter one day watching it from home, but that's our reality. But let me tell you something. God has not changed. So many changes has happened lately. But the message of the cross and what God did on Easter 2,020 years ago has not changed and it has the same power. And I want you to go with me today in the Bible to Matthew 26, 28. Here is Jesus talking at the Last Supper and he says, For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you because today we can celebrate what you did on the cross and no matter what's going on in our world, the same message of the gospel transforming and changing radically people's lives who surrender their lives to you is still happening. We thank you, Jesus for dying on the cross for us. And we ask you, you just help us to understand your word and you would speak to us. We pray in your name, Jesus. Amen and amen. The title of the message today is what Jesus did at the cross has not changed. Has something changed in your life lately? I bet it has. Social distancing, I'm going to talk about that. The pressure of the situation that we are living and the same old bad news every morning. And what this has to do with Easter? Well, we find in the Bible a, a few glimpses of stuff like this going on also in the moment where Jesus was, was taken, was beaten, was cru crucified. But the great news is that he came back to life. And because he lives, we can face tomorrow uh, all him says. Has something changed in your life? A lot of things have changed, but the power of the message of the gospel has not changed. And Jesus said before he went to the cross, this is my blood of the new covenant, a new covenant which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. It doesn't say that my blood has been shed for everybody that lives under, un, under the sun. It says for many. You and I make the decision if we become part of that many for who Jesus died on the cross. We're gonna, we talk about social distancing, not an easy subject. Everybody is struggling with that. And I can see that we all want to do what we want to do. And that's why so many people is getting infected because we still want to hang out. We still want to go everywhere. We still want to touch. We still want to do everything like back in the past. And it's so challenging to change our, our, our behavior. And the social distancing is not an easy thing. Matthew 26, 46, 27, sorry, 46. Jesus experienced at the cross a distancing they cannot compare to not hanging out with their friends for a month or two. Jesus said at the cross, in about the ninth hour, which is three in the afternoon, about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why is it so powerful? What Jesus is saying here at the cross, 
The father couldn't handle the pain anymore. And he had to look away from a moment from his son dying on the cross for you and for me. And that moment of Jesus not feeling the presence and feeling this, the distance from the father was so, so intense. And we cannot compare that with social distancing from our friends. And you're going to be okay. You and I are not going to die if we don't see our friends or hug our friends for a while. But the social distancing or the, or the godly distancing from our creator is the worst thing that a person can experience. But let me tell you today, many people in this world is suffering. Not so much because of social distancing from the friends. But if you don't know Jesus, your life, your heart is suffering. You maybe don't even know it, but it's the distancing from God that is taking you to that place of being a slave of sin, of not having peace in the presence of God in your life. That is the worst thing that can happen because God created us. And he made us to be close to him. Look what the Bible says in John 15, verse 5 and 6. I am the vine, Jesus said. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Listen, he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you talk about distancing from God. That is the worst of the worst. And many people are, don't even know how far they are from God. And some even sitting in churches or calling them some Christians, they have religion, but they don't have that connection with God. If you don't have the connection with God, you know it. You know when you are close to a friend and you know when you're far from a friend. In the same way in our spirit, we want to believe that we are close to God because maybe we read the Bible, go to church, but only the Holy Spirit reveals to us how close and far we are from him. And it all starts surrendering our life to Jesus. It all starts when we accept what Jesus did at Easter when he died at the cross. He says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Verse 6 of John 15 says, If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. It's talking about hell. Distancing from people is nothing when you compare distancing from God. Your eternity depends on are you close to him or are you not even a Christian? You don't even know him. What is essential these days is not so much food and work and health and jobs. What is essential? We all were, we all learned that word these days, essential, not essential. What are the businesses that are essential? What are the stores that are essential? What are the things that are essential and the jobs that are not essential? Let me tell you, there is only one essential thing in life, and that is having a relationship with Jesus. Because if you die today, your job doesn't count. Your health doesn't count. Your money doesn't count. Your friend doesn't count. The only thing that is essential in this life it's a relationship with Jesus. That's why we invite him into our lives. Matthew 28, 20 says, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus knows that the most important close relationship is with him. And he promised us when we become a Christian, I am with you always. I am with you always. Always. I always remember this story. My father passed away many years ago. My oldest sister, Andrea, she was pregnant, eight months pregnant at my father's funeral. And she went and she hugged my, my father's brother. We call it Uncle Rudy. And she told my uncle, I miss my dad's hug. And I'm never going to experience the hugs of my daddy. Uncle hugged me again. And my uncle, a godly man, told her, I can hug you right now, but let me tell you somebody who wants to hug you all the time, and that is God. He says, I am with you always. 
What is your struggle during this change? Let me tell you, God promises us to be always, 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 always with us. When we go to the story of, of Easter, we find in John 18, 2, something very in interesting strike me this, this, this week while I was preparing this sermon. We know that Judas betrayed Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. And here it says in John 18, 2, it says, And Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place. For Jesus, the Bible says, often met there with his disciples. The Garden of Gethsemane was not a place where he met with the multitudes. Or maybe other group of people in his life. The Garden of Gethsemane was the place, the Bible says, where Jesus often meet with his disciples. If he had a place where he often met with his 12 disciples, he wants to have a place also, not only physically in your house. You know, we all have turned our homes and our bedrooms in offices, in our living room, another office, and the garage is another office. In my house, it's six in our home, and there is so many little offices and computer tables here and there. Everybody has a spot. But is it also a place in our hearts? When he doesn't have a place in our hearts, he's never going to have a physical place in our home where we are going to meet with him. Jesus met with his disciples in the same place. If you are a Christian, you need to find that place. The second thing is the pressure of the situation. We're not only talking these days a lot about social distancing, but we also are under a lot of pressure. Some people have lost their job. Others have the kids at home, and everybody's at home 24-7. Everything has changed. There are people who are sick. There are others who have too much time to think and they don't know what to do. Let's go to the story of Easter. Let's go to the story of behind the dead and resurrection at the Garden of Gethsemane. There was one guy who experienced a lot of pressure and he did not act it right. John 18, 10 says, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. And then it says the servant's name was Malchus. Now, if you are like me or like Simon Peter, this change and this pressure maybe is bringing the worst out of you. Let me tell you, God wants to bring the best out of you. And it's interesting that the name Malchus, the name of the servant of the, of the high priest, the Peter got mad. He's trying to defend. He's trying to fix everything. And we are like that sometimes during this time. We're trying to fix everything. And we get the name of Malchus means in Hebrew, king. He being Malchus, his name mean king. He did not strike back. How are you and I acting under pressure? I love the story of the Bible here where Malchus, he could have got another sword. He couldn't take off. He could have done so many crazy things. But he stays still, hurting, bleeding, his ears in the floor. He's under a lot of confusion, a lot of pressure. I don't know where his mind is going, but he stays still in the presence of Jesus. And Jesus grabs that ear and puts it back in his place and instantly heal him. Instantly heals Malchus. The pressure of the moment is doing some crazy things in some people. But let me tell you, God wants us to again stay in his presence. Find what we can only find in him. I know there are a lot of us are trying to find all this entertainment, all this activity, and all these things. And I'm not saying they are bad, but none of those will really give you the peace, the revelation, the joy, and what you need the most, what it is, spend time in the Word and spend time with God in this time because He's trying to do something new in your life.
God is trying to do something new in your life. Is the pressure of the situation making you act like Peter? Is the pressure of the situation bringing the worst out of you? But when the worst out of us comes, if we know Jesus, I know the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. It's going to tell you there is an area here in your life that you need to allow God to change you. That you need to recognize that you are not doing the right thing. It's interesting here in the story that Jesus rebukes Peter for doing what he did. Jesus rebuked Peter for doing what we did, what he did. And Malchus means king. And there are, in every home, there is somebody who is acting like a king lately. Everything has to go their way. Other ones are hurting. Others are hurting back. The pressure of the moment should take you to stay in Jesus' presence now more than ever. I hope that you struggle. If you struggle like me under pressure, we are, we, we, well, the pressure sometimes makes us do and say things that we shouldn't. If that is you, I hope you're spending more time with God. I'm hoping that you are opening more and more and more and more your Bible. The third thing I want to talk today is the news of this world. Are you tired of the same old bad news every morning or every evening? I don't watch the news all day. I am just staying busy. But at the night when I go to bed, I watch the news for a few minutes. I read the news on my phone for a few minutes. It is interesting that all I hear is the same old bad news. If yesterday was 15, now it's 20. Here was 1,000, now it's 1,500. Here was 100, now it's 180, whatever it is. But you know what, my friends? Why did Jesus die on the cross? Because he came to bring us news, but they are good news for us. I am getting tired of the news. I am getting tired of the same old bad news. And I know they're giving us information but that's all they're doing for you and me, giving us information. But God's news brings transformation. And maybe you are watching today this sermon and you are tired of information. You might have a lot of diplomas. You might know a lot. You might read the internet all day long. You might have all this knowledge of the world. But you have not experienced transformation in your life yet. Luke twenty two twenty, the Bible says here Jesus, before he was betrayed, and he had the supper, the last supper with his disciples, it says, likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. God is always trying to do something new. And that's why I love about God. Every time I open the Bible, I find a new good news and revelation. It's, 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 it's always God is always doing something new in my life. The Bible says that his mercy, the mercies of God are every morning. They are new. If you are a Christian... You need to spend time in the Word and find every moment great good news. Maybe you read that scripture many times, but if you go again and read it and let God speak to you, what is the new thing that God is trying to do in your life? Again, if you keep watching the news, all you're going to get is information. And you cannot change anything of that information. You cannot do much about it. Maybe you can wear a mask. Maybe you can wash your hands more. Maybe you can wear gloves. But the information is not changing anybody's life. We need transformation. This is a beautiful time for us to experience transformation. Transformation. The Bible says in John 13, 34, Jesus said, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. A new commandment I give to you. 
Let me tell you the highlights of my days. Every day, the highlights of my days are two things. New things that God is trying to do in my life. That is always powerful. And the other second category of the best time in my day is when I am trying to love somebody in my life. That can be with a phone call. That can be with a text. That can be praying for somebody who doesn't even know. That can be taking food to somebody. No, no, no matter what it is, those are the two things that make my life exciting. The new things that God is trying to do in my heart and how am I loving others? How am I loving others? Others. In this time of, 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 of social distancing, we, I think we're all eating more and we are planning our meals. And in my house, sometimes it got to a point where, where, where we finish dinner tonight, which is our main meal, and somebody asked, and what is for us dinner tomorrow, mom? <laughs> because we are trying to find what is the exciting thing going on in our lives. But no matter if you eat your favorite meal every night, your favorite breakfast, your favorite lunch. Nothing is new. You've done it before. It's just a second of excitement as you chew through that food and you swallow it. And that's it. But what really makes us live is when we go to bed in the night that we can say, God spoke something to me today. He's doing something new. And I found a new way to love a person. A new commandment I give you. I wrote this down, and I so believe it's the truth. Satan, Satan only brings bad news. Satan only brings bad news. Look at the world. But God only brings good news. For this is my blood of the new covenant, the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. The Bible says here in Matthew 26, 28, the new thing that God is bringing as he dies on the cross is the blood that he is shedding, not for everybody who lives under the sun, but for many, many, not everybody, but for many. What did that mean? You and I make the decision if you are going to become part of that many, if you surrender your life to Jesus, if you get to a place in your life where you say, I cannot fix this. It's so interesting, the things that are going on in our world, the government cannot fix it, the doctors cannot fix it, money cannot fix it, nothing of it going on cannot fix it. More and more the situation is taking people to a place that says, we are at the end of our power. And there is some people that is watching this message and they are also at the end of what they can do for their own lives. Let me tell you, that's why Jesus died on the cross. That's why we celebrate Easter. Because when we reach our limits, like the world is right now and many people is reaching their limits, that is when God is on the other side saying, invite me into your life. Give me opportunity to show you how much I love you. There is no limits in the love of God. There is no limits in the power of God. There is no limits of what God wants and can do with your life. Even if you think that you are at your limit, there is no limits for God. Now I want to read to you a letter from a doctor in Lombardy, Italy. And we all know this is one of the worst Countries who have been hit the worst by the coronavirus. This doctor's name is Lulian Urban, 30 years old, a doctor in Lombardy, Italy. Never in the darkness nightmares I imagine I could see and live what has been going on here in the, our hospital for three weeks. The nightmare flows. The river gets bigger and bigger. At first, some came, then dozens, and then hundreds. And now we are no longer doctors, but we became a soldier on the tape. And we decide who should live and who should be sent home to die. Although all these people pay Italian taxes their entire life. Until two weeks ago, 
My colleagues and I were atheists. It was normal because we are doctors and we have learned that science excludes God's presence. I always laughed at my parents who went to church. But nine days ago, a 75-year-old pastor came to us. He was a kind man. He had serious breathing problems, but he had a Bible with him. And we were impressed that he will read it to the dying and hold their hands. We were all tired, discouraged, physically finished doctors. And when we had time to hear, this pastor spoke to us. Now we must admit we as humans have reached our limits and more and more people die every day. We are tired. We had two colleagues who die and others have been infected. We have realized that, that we, what we men can do, came to an end. We need God and we started asking him to help us. When we have a few minutes free, we speak to each other now, and we cannot believe that from furious atheists, now every day we are seeking God's peace, asking the Lord to help us resist so we can care for the sick. Yesterday, the 75-year-old pastor died. To that moment, despite having had more than 120 dead in three weeks, we were all exhausted, destroyed. But this pastor despised his physical condition and difficulties, brought to us the peace that we thought we would never find. The pastor went to the Lord, and we will soon follow him if it continues like this. I haven't been home in six days. I don't know when I last ate. And I realized my fertility on this earth. And I want to devote my last breath now to help others. I am glad to have returned to God. While I am surrounded by the suffering and death of my fellow men. When I read this story, it showed me the heart of the gospel. It showed me the heart of why Jesus came and died and resurrected to give us new life. What is essential? This doctor and his friends, furious, laughing, making fun of Christians, Atheists, now in this hospital in Italy, hundreds of people are dying. But this one man, a 75-year-old pastor, came to tell him, Jesus loves you. He can bring you peace. He wants to forgive your sins. And he wants to give you the strength that you cannot find anymore in yourself. One of the parts that strikes me of this letter is we must admit as humans we have reached our limits and more and more people die every day. The other part it says I always laughed at my parents who went to church. You know there was a time in my own life that I also laughed at the Christian. I laughed at my parents who were Christians. But at the end of the letter, Lulian says, I am glad to have returned to God. Maybe that is you today. Maybe you have reached your limits. Maybe as you hear this message, you understand the, the lack of a job, 
which is, it's, it's greatly. Nobody wants to lose their home. Nobody wants to be without food. Nobody wants to be without health insurance. Nobody wants to be away from their friends. Nobody wants to see the family sick or the elderly parents in a hospital. Nobody wants to see that. But I need to tell you today that Jesus died on the cross to show us that all the essential thing in this life is having a relationship with him. That is the only, only essential thing because nothing of this world can change your eternity and my eternity. The Bible says in John 10, 10 that he came to give us life and more abundant life, but also it says in John 3, 16 that he came to give us eternal life. Where are you today? What is the new thing that God wants to do in your life. This Easter can become the most important Easter of your life, not because of the coronavirus, but because Jesus wants to come into your life. You and I need to humble ourselves and admit only God can fix this world. We have got to a place that we need to understand the science and money and power and, and, and whatever man has, has reached his limit. And if you personally are in that place in your life and you have reached your limits, God is waiting for you. He will not force himself into your life. He's just saying, come to me, all those who are weary and tired, and I will give you way more than what you can imagine. And if that's you today, you need Jesus into your life. You're tired of the old news. It's all bad. You're tired of the pressure. You're tired of the distancing from people. But the Holy Spirit has shown you that you are distanced from God for more than three, four weeks or three or four months. Maybe your entire life. Maybe you used to walk with God and you walked away from him and you're so distanced from him. If that's you today, I want you to pray this prayer with me, surrendering your life to Jesus. Say, Father God, I need you in my life. The most, the most distance that is hurting me the most is the distance from you. The pressure that I'm experiencing and I have no hope is because I don't have you. Lord, I understand I have reached the limits of my power, my knowledge, my money, my titles, and everything that I have. And I need you in my life. Jesus, come into my life. Make me a new person. Forgive me all my sins. I want to start walking with you again. I'm tired of what's going on inside of me. I need you to come inside of me and make me new. Please, God. Please, God, come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. I hope you did this prayer. If you did it, you can connect with us to our church. You can connect through, our, through the website. You can find a church, Christian preaching. You can buy a Bible and start reading the Word of God. But let me tell you something. When we reach our limits... Is when we find God, and that's when a new life will start. God bless you. Thank you for watching today's message. We hope it blessed you, and I just want to remind you that we love you and that we're caring for you, and we're hoping the best for you. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe and share this message on all social media platforms, and be sure to turn on the notifications so that when we do post the video, you can watch it. We love you, church. Have a great week.